Hello, everyone, and welcome to City Parks Alliance 2019 webinar series. Today's webinar, Active Parks, Healthy Cities, Increasing Physical Activity Among te Teen Girls and Seniors, will explore creative models and programs that have successfully engaged these underrepresented demographics in physical activity in their parks and community spaces. My name is Nelson Beckford. I'm the Program Director for Neighborhood Revitalization and Engagement at the Cleveland Foundation here in Cleveland, Ohio. I am pleased to be the moderator for today's session. If you're interested in continuing education credits for the seminar for AICP, we'll be sending a follow-up email in the next week with instructions on how to claim your credits. Our learning objectives. This webinar will begin by providing an overview of the key findings of City Parks Alliance's Active Parks Healthy Cities Report specifically as they relate to participation of teen girls and seniors in parks and recreation programming. Following this overview, our first speaker, Liz Farrow, will show how she started a program in Cleveland that uses free fitness and wellness programming to empower the minds, bodies, and souls of girls who are at risk or have experienced abuse. Liz will discuss innovative strategies for engaging this demographic and ensuring a safe and positive environment. Our second speaker, Casey Ware, will discuss how she has successfully grown program offerings for seniors through the City of Jasper, Indiana's Older American Center, a division of the Park and Recreation Department. By, by adapting programs for various ability levels and creating a space for positive social interactions to occur, the center has seen, great, has seen greatly increased participation levels in the last year and a half. Our speakers will focus on ways you can establish similar models in your cities by demonstrating how cities and their nonprofit partners can work together to create innovative programming that effectively engages teen girls and seniors, how to modify or adapt existing programs for teen girls and seniors to ensure they're meeting part that they're meeting participants where they are while offering challenge and opportunities for positive social interaction, and how to market your program and work with local champions to increase participation. No matter where your organization is around the country, we hope today's session will ensure that you're equipped with some new ideas, tools, and methods to ensure that your community partners are working together to provide teen girls and seniors with ample opportunities to engage in physical activity in your community spaces. We'd like to begin with an overview of some of the key findings from City Parks Alliance's Active Parks Healthy Cities Report, particularly as they relate to teen girls and seniors. The National Study of Neighborhood Parks, which informed the information this report, found that four key elements draw people to parks. Programming, walking loops, play area, and effective on-site marketing. Focusing on programming in particular, we found that each additional supervised activity increased park use by 48%. Since programming can draw both seniors and teens to parks, it can be particularly effective to increase part participation. Walking loops, in particular, can be a great addition for seniors as they attract twice as many seniors as parks without walking loops. There's unfortunately a significant gender cap when it comes to teens' use of parks. The study found that only 35% of teen girls in parks only 35% of teens in parks were girls. And of those 35%, only 4% of the girls were engaged in teen sports compared to 38% of teen boys. Programming that intentionally targets teen girls can help create a greater gender balance when it comes to participation park activities. If you would like to read the Active Parks Healthy City Reports in its entirety, you can find it at City Parks Alliance website at www cityparksalliance.org under the resources tab. Now it's time to hear from our speakers about how they effectively engage teen girls and seniors in physical activities in their community. Our first speaker is Liz Farrow. Liz is the founder and CEO of Girls with Soul. Liz was born in Rochester, New York and lived in four foster homes before her adoption at the age of two. As a child, she was abused by a neighbor and found solace in fitness and running. To date, Liz has crossed many finish lines. She's completed 70 marathons and countless other road races and triathlons. The empowerment gained from sports led her to found the nonprofit organization called Girls with Soul. She's a recipient of the 2015 Women Who Excel Entrepreneur Award and several other awards and honors. Following Liz's presentation, we'll hear from Casey Ware. 
Casey serves as the Community Engagement Coordinator at the Older American Center, Division of the Jasper, Indiana Park and Recreation Department. Casey has a passion for promoting quality of life for seniors and teaching and encouraging exercise as medicine. Casey is an American College of Sports Medicine Certified Exercise Physiologist, is a certified yoga instructor, and holds a health coach certification. Her experience includes older adult fitness and recreation in corporate and community fitness and wellness. We'll hear both of our speakers' presentation before moving into the Q&A session. In order to make sure we can respond to everyone's questions or problems that arise, here's some tips. In order to ask a question, click the text box underneath question, the question two bar on your go-to webinar control panel, type the question in the box and click send. Feel free to send questions throughout the presentation. Just know that we'll be holding them until the end. If you experience any technical problems in the presentation, please type in the question in the box and send it to us. If you miss something, don't worry. Download links to the presentation, recordings, and copies of documents referenced today. Referenced during today's webinar will be emailed to all registrants. Okay, let's get started. Liz, take it away. All righty. Thank you, Nelson. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Liz Farrow, the founder, CEO, and executive director of Girls with Soul. Thank you so much um, for letting me be part of this amazing and super important webinar. I feel so fortunate to be able to share with people who understand the importance of empowering our youth and our communities in mind and body. Girls with Soul provides free fitness and wellness programs to girls ages 9 to 18 who are at risk or have experienced abuse of any kind. The girls themselves never have to pay for participation in Girls with Soul, and our funding is heavily driven by fundraisers, corporate grants, and in-kind donations from relationships developed with local running stores. In order to conduct the program curriculum, I create a program partnership with schools, social service agencies, rec centers, residential treatment centers, and detention facilities, and bring the programs to the girls directly where they are. In order to make the program successful and assure participation, it's imperative to secure a champion or advocate at each location from the get-go. Someone who already knows the kids and can help establish both interest and excitement for the program, like a counselor or a school principal. I think we all know that fitness and recreation can do amazing things, but it was my personal life experiences that taught me just how powerful they could be and how physical strength is directly correlated to emotional strength. I was moved between four foster homes, uh, as Nelson mentioned, before I was adopted at the age of two, and there was abuse in my foster home, so I came to my adoptive family with some issues. We'll just say, just say that. Uh, my dad in particular helped me overcome some of these issues by signing me up for various activities and sports teams. For example, I was on a competitive swim team and gymnastics team starting at the age of five years old. Things were going great until I was about eight and that's when my next door neighbor began raping me on and off for about a year. When I disclosed the abuse to my mom, she wanted to keep it a secret from everyone. So over the years, this resulted in anger, self-destructive behavior, and depression, among other things. I really needed to find a way to cope and be healthy on my own and found purpose, strength, and empowerment in sports and fitness. I wanted other young women to make the same discovery, but hopefully much earlier in life than I did. I knew that if it worked for me, it could work for anyone if they were simply shown the way there. When someone believes in them and introduces them to the mind, body, and soul connection, it's amazing how quickly they become to uh, accept themselves and embrace it. Even if they don't really want to participate at first or they act like they want nothing to do with it when we first meet, by getting them active with high energy facilitation of fun games, fitness stations, hiking, and simple movement in general, they forget about the exercise and start to focus on the fun, self-esteem, and confidence that it brings instead. To really encourage movement and full participation, I have a few key things to remember for you. First of all, the facilitator must be super high energy and have a very positive presence. 
the kids really respond to the positive energy and they start to recognize that it's something that they want for themselves. Also, be sure the programs aren't a spectator sport for anybody. This includes any staff that might join you and the facilitator as well. You can't ask the kids to do anything that the adults aren't willing to do. A couple other tips that I have found work extremely well are to use music to pump up the energy whenever possible. And be sure to play some fun movement games. I have one in particular called Clean Your Room, which kids of all ages love, even if they hate to clean their actual rooms. Uh, I get about 16 to 20 of those little squishy rubber creatures from five below and put them in the middle of the room or the gym. The kids are separated into two equal teams facing each other and a timer is set. The kids have to pick up and throw the squishies onto the other team's side of the room. When the timer goes off, the team with the most squishies on their side loses because their room isn't clean. And I'll tell you, it's crazy how much they run, squat, throw, jump, laugh, and get super winded, but completely forget about the fact that they're exercising. Girls with Soul is really about planting those seeds of fitness instead of just getting a group together and telling them to go run. They begin to see that the activities they once felt were only for other people are actually places and activities where they can find peace, power, energy, and happiness. I actually have a little story that I want to share with you about the young lady in the picture of the two girls holding hands while running to the finish in a 5K race. She's wearing number 248, and she was probably one of my most resistant Girls with Soul participants. In fact, she claimed she would never run. She also came to our Camp Power this summer, and on the day I took them to the park for a nature hike, she literally was angry and grumbling at the trailhead um, about the fact that only white people go on nature hikes. She was grouchy up until about halfway into the hike, which is kind of funny. That's about when it takes place, right? When the endorphins kick in. And that's when we got off the beaten path and she um, decided it was gonna be really fun to work with the other girls to find our way back onto the desired trail. All of a sudden she was full of energy and wanted to run up and down the hills asking me to race her and smiling from ear to ear. Since then, the therapist at the residential treatment center told me that she is asked to go back to the Metro Park so that they could go on the trail that I took them on in the first place. And they've gone back several times since then on their own. So without Girls with Soul, most of the girls I serve wouldn't discover that fitness in nature and park activities are in fact for them and good for them. I strongly believe another key factor for success in these programs that gets the girls involved and keeps them participating is the fact that it's for girls only. They're much less apprehensive to try new things when it's all girls. In front of the boys, they aren't comfortable getting sweaty or not knowing how to play a certain sport or a game. They enjoy the feel of a safe, non-judgmental place where they can be themselves. And if boys are part of it, that dynamic would completely change. They take ownership of the program and discover that participating in sports is something they may not otherwise have been willing to try. I actually had a young lady named Emily who I worked with her freshman and sophomore years in high school. And she told me that she was initially petrified to come to Girls of Soul because she didn't consider herself athletic in the least. And she also thought I was going to be like a football coach blowing a whistle and yelling at them the whole time. She credits Girls of Soul with great confidence and self-esteem, as well as the fact that she went out for and made the soccer team, softball team, and bowling team in her junior and senior years. She said she never would have done that without Girls of Soul, and she's now in college and in ROTC. And I have to say another cool part about it being an all group is all female group is that all the girls receive sports bras, running shoes, and copies of the Girls of Soul books that encourage more comfortable and properly outfitted participation. Without the distribution of the sports bras in particular, many of the girls didn't want to participate because the movement was physically uncomfortable and somewhat embarrassing for them. We took care of that by making sure they were all properly outfitted. The books in particular make a big difference as well um, as an addition to our curriculum because reading them changes how the girls view fitness, view themselves, and view Girls with Soul as a program. They're inspired by the books and feel they give permission to give voice to their own stories as well. They also love that the books illustrate that Miss Liz leads by example. When they read about Ironman triathlons, running marathons in all 50 states, or on the Great Wall of China, 
they feel that they too can overcome obstacles and achieve great things. My setting an example makes a really huge difference. This goes back to making sure you don't just facilitate, but also participate in your programs. The girls want to continue with fitness on their own because they learn that self-esteem and confidence comes from doing hard things and accomplishing something you once deemed impossible. This sense of power comes from the fact that a physical achievement is also earned and never given. And once you've done it, no one can take it from you. The power principles are basically the DNA of Girls with Soul. Each of them can be learned from sports and fitness as well as used in everyday life. And to make them even more impactful, they are all achievable and accessible to anyone who wants to choose to use them. So I just want to thank everybody for your time and for listening. And please feel free to contact me outside of the webinar or follow Girls with Soul on social media. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Liz, for sharing your inspiring work with Girls with Soul. As a reminder to our participants, please be sure to send your questions via the question box on your GoToWebinar control panel at any time, and we'll answer all questions at, that end, at the end. Casey, you're all set. Thank you, Nelson. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar today. I'm absolutely thrilled as well, like Liz said, to have the opportunity to be part of this um, today and share about our exercise programs and also some tips for increasing participation amongst seniors. And as Nelson mentioned, my name is Casey Ware, and I'm with the Older American Center in Jasper, Indiana. I am a certified health exercise physiologist with the American College of Sports Medicine and also hold exercises medicine credential, which is actually um, quite a passion of mine. So a little bit about who we are um, as, as far as where, where we are located in Indiana um, and what our demographics look like. So in, um, in Indiana, we are actually we hold about a three and a half percent higher 55 plus population than Indiana as a state. So as the country is seeing larger numbers of a 55 plus population, our county is definitely experiencing the same. So therefore, at the Older American Center, we strive to serve all county residents 55 and older with planned programming such as cards, games, day trips, exercise classes. Uh, we offer an exercise room, computers, technology assistance, a library, and, and many spaces for socialization as well. We operate as a division of the Jasper Park and Recreation Department, and we are a nonprofit that is funded by the city of Jasper and also our county, which is why we can be open as a countywide senior center. So down in the bottom corner, you can actually see that is a photo of our senior center. But in 1976, the Older American Center actually opened under the city of Jasper. It was a drop-in center only, and any planned activities actually had to take place in separate venues because they operated out, that, out of a home. Um, in 1978, the first exercise class began. So exercise classes have been taking place for quite a while. Um, 2002, they moved to a larger facility, and which is great now because we do have a larger space to be able to host our fitness classes. In 2012, we began a second exercise class. So in 2000, March 2018, I came on board and began adding, gradually adding more and more fitness options and beefing up the classes that were already in place. So the classes that were already in place, we had a chair exercise class, low impact aerobics, and also water aerobics during the summertime. When I, when I came on board, gradually we have added in exercise classes such as our walking and wellness class, which we call our senior 
step. So step actually stands for senior striving toward empowerment and purpose. So when, when reaching that age, many times they'll find themselves where they are retired, they've just, just recently retired, and looking for, you know, something to empower them, giving them a purpose as well in, those, in these years of life after retirement. Also, um, we have our chair yoga class, beginners yoga classes as well. Um, and then also we do a little bit of line dancing too. So our line dancing, we, we offer in between two of our classes. So we'll do anything, just something fun, energetic, get the, get the blood pumping, but also especially the excitement that they're excited to be there. Um, in the next class, we are actually looking into adding now is a, is a Tai Chi class as well. Um, so I am actually hired as the Community Engagement Coordinator. So as the Community Engagement Coordinator, I am on board to um, help coordinate, plan, um, implement different programming as well, um, but as well as the fitness classes. And so that has been a phenomenal opportunity to be able to grow those. So my superiors have been phenomenal in allowing me to do that. And the exercise classes have actually been one of the best ways we have seen to increase the baby boomer population and bring in those who have most recently retired. So a little bit about increasing numbers. Um, our first exercise class, which we call Golden Go, uh, February 2018 to February 2019, our participation increase was 103%. Um, and like I said, um, we began implementing these changes in March 2018. In August 2017 to August 2019, the participation increase has been about 124%. So we continue to increase those numbers by implementing the strategies, which I, I will get into here in just a, just a bit. But just this past Monday, our parking lot and our room were, were likely at, at their max. So we are actually looking into solving this issue so that classes can continue to serve as many of our community seniors as absolutely possible. So it's a great, great issue to have um, and looking into see how we, how we can continue serving them. This slide here is just showing a few photos of our exercise classes. So the top, um, top left corner is our chair exercise class. Bottom right hand corner is our senior strong, which is our low, low impact aerobics class. And then finally our water aerobics as well, which takes place with our, at our city pool. But you'll see there, that is a quote from one of our participants. Um, I love that quote because it, it speaks of so much of the social socialization and looking in, you know, when you, you look at that, seniors, you know, they, that's something that they need, whether they've lost a spouse, friends, loved ones, anything of sort, you know, having that socialization, coming to class, not only getting exercise, but also, also getting a time to share with others. This one as well, just a continuation of a few other, a couple other photos of our exercise classes. This is our senior step class down in the bottom left. Um, this class we we do, a, we go around to our different city parks and we take a walk um, and we, it is absolutely completely related to aging. It's one of my favorite classes. They, I love all of the classes, of course, but but this one um, truly, as the name says, seniors striving toward empowerment and purpose. So keeping each topic that we do speak, up, speak about in each of those sessions, keeping them related to specifically aging. But the quote there also from another one of our participants I absolutely love, just a testament to how those classes, these exercise classes have helped her reconnect with her old friends, but also to help her get off diabetic medications, which is something that I absolutely love being that um, exercise is 
exercise, using exercise as medicine is one of my one of my passions. But seeing that, you know, she's happier than any other time in her life is just a wonderful testament to to, you know, continuing to do what we what we do and provide to our to our groups and our seniors. So increasing attendance um, at the center. Um, first thing, of course, adding those classes and how to decide and decipher which classes to add next. So we're doing a little bit of research is always the first step that I like to take, um, looking to see what benefits, benefits seniors the most, uh, looking at what is needed, wanted, and feasible for our group. Um, so what is feasible for our location, for us, and then what, what do the seniors want and need? And also when to offer the classes. We've found that mid-morning works fantastic for our community, um, but then but definitely looking to see what, what does your community want the most. Marketing, of course, is always a necessary tool. So adding descriptions and class names. So that is one thing when I did come on board, our exercise classes were listed in our newsletter as, as the first exercise class and second exercise class. So we added, added names to those classes, deep up the descriptions. So you, utilizing our newsletter, our website, also our local newspaper it, are different ways that we use to market these classes. But word of mouth is one of the most important ways of marketing that we have increased our numbers. So once we have pulled in someone and we have retained that person, they share that with their friends, and that is how um, many of our of our participants have attended our classes is by by a, a prod from a friend. Um, so then a class breakdown. So this is a little bit more multifaceted. So we're going to go into this just a bit more. So our exercise class breakdown. Uh, one of the very most important things that I feel. Um, is always necessary at any exercise class or program is a welcome for those participants and letting them know what to expect so they're not coming in completely blind. Also reaching different fitness levels as well. So there will be, especially in this age group, varying levels of participants. So a lot of times I will have an individual in a walker and then I will have an individual who run um, on the days that they don't come to exercise class. So a very wide variety. But whenever going through and teaching those classes, making sure that you as a fitness instructor or, or if it's your fitness instructor that you have hired, being sure that they, they show those modifications, explaining, showing them, and letting those participants know, even reminding them several times through class to listen to their bodies and listening to their bodies at different moments during class um, so that they, they are participating upon how they are feeling and what their body is telling them. Also teaching to different learning styles as well. So you will have different learning styles in the exercise class. So those explanations, making sure you're serving those who learn best through auditory cues, visual cues, and kinesthetic cues. So those kinesthetic cues is those who learn best by knowing how they should feel. And finally, the thank you and the invitation to further classes. Just some different things to remember, making sure you have appropriate music for your audience, um, making sure you have the lo proper licensing to play it, making sure your voice is heard so that that way those in the back can, can hear you, um, having waivers to protect yourself and considering the environmental factors. So those things such as if you are walking out on a city path, making sure that, that you take precaution that, that they know that they need to have sure footing or avoid certain areas. Also, um, once we have those participants, one of the most important things is retaining them. Once you have them in the door, you don't want to lose them. So retaining those participants, one of the most, these are five of the most important things I feel. So interaction, learning their names, learning their stories. Each person has a story. Um, being absolutely positive, smiling, and being in the moment in each class. Respecting them. 
So I, of course, am a little bit younger than many of my participants. Um, so, you know, this might be my expertise, but my participants are absolutely full of knowledge, wisdom, and experience. So making sure that, you know, I'm not walking into class like I'm, I'm better than absolutely anyone, respecting my elders. Um, being flexible, reading my class, um, making sure that I'm modifying when necessary, taking a break when necessary making class fun, and finally, once again, that appreciation, letting them know that their attendance is appreciated, and then also for, thank them for spreading the word and for being welcoming to the new individuals who step into class and inviting them to the next, next class offered. And then finally, I do want to touch a little bit more on just making class fun, providing a variety, so changing up the routine, the music, adding new exercises, keeping up with the what's next question so you can keep the class fresh, allowing and promoting socialization, being human, you know, you, and anyone, you know, makes mistakes. I tend to say, take a step less whenever I, I mean to say, take a, take a step right. So, you know, give them a giggle, creating interactions with the class, asking them, okay, how is everyone doing in the back or how's everyone doing in the front? Um, getting that energy through the entire class so that that way they leave excited and energy, energetic to come again. And also, you know, maybe having a theme every once in a while. So during Halloween, we dress up or, or at Thanksgiving, we have a canned food drive uh, for our local food bank and using those canned foods as our weights during exercise class. Or for instance, we stepped across America earlier this spring, starting in Washington, D.C. and going to San Francisco. So those are just different ways to make the exercise classes fun and exciting and keeping those participants to come, coming back, you know, um, making, making these, these Years of life after retirement, the most exciting is absolutely possible. But I just want to thank you all for listening today to this, this uh, part of the webinar. And uh, feel free to send in whatever questions you may have. I'd be happy to answer them. Great. Thanks so much, Casey, for sharing the great work you've, been, you've, you've done engaging seniors in physical activity. Listeners have been sending in questions in the webinar, so let's get the Q&A started. Um, Liz, this one is for you, Liz. Um, okay. Ms. Furrow, do you have any concerns that young girls may grow to reject boys and men given the focus of your program? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, it isn't a concern at all it, because it's really based on feeling strong and um, feeling confident about yourself. And being able to interact with other people, no matter what sex they are, is part of that. Um, it's just uh, how they interact with them. So it's not so much that they're going to reject um, boys or men. It's more the fact that um, they don't feel like they need to be uncomfortable around them, which I think is actually a plus. Uh, oftentimes, I'll bring guests with me to teach different things that maybe I don't teach. Um, like for instance, I'm not... Um, a certified yoga instructor. So if I bring somebody in to do yoga, that person might be a guy. And I know that that goes against the whole girls with soul thing, but you're going to come up against, um, you know, different people in the world. So when I have people come in to give them something positive, it doesn't matter um, if it's a guy or a girl. And I think that they see that and they know that it's about how they can feel good about themselves, um, no matter who's in the room. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, another question. Um, what are some surprising non-planned outcomes of your programs and how has this affected your participants in ways that you did not plan? Casey, can you take a stab at that question? Sure. So when I first came on board um, last or in March 2018, I was a little worried about the reaction to some of the adjustments and changes I was implementing. Um, I didn't know if we would lose participants and, to the changes, but by implementing the changes and our phenomenal group of seniors, by word of mouth, um, just having that energy in those classes as well, 
we're now actually working through space and parking issues. So I mentioned that during um, during the webinar or during the portion of presentation. That is that was um, I guess not necessarily a surpri surprising is the right word, but uh, maybe a bit more unexpected outcome. Liz, do you want to um, try to answer that question also? What has been some surprising outcomes of uh, your oh, program? Oh my gosh, I've had so many actually. Um, two in particular stand out to me right away. One, um, there was a young lady in residential treatment who obviously was pretty resistant to being part of the program and um, also in restraints for a good portion of the day um, until she finally relented and came at one point and then all of a sudden turned around and became sort of the poster child, so to speak, of Girls of Soul. But one thing that was super unexpected, aside from the fact that she ended up running um, a marathon, we bought her a bike, Girls of Soul provided her with a bike and she did a duathlon and a triathlon. Um, those things are surprising in, the, in themselves, but she had some issues with eating disorders and we don't really, we do touch on um, nutrition um, and we're definitely highly focused on strength versus being skinny, um, but we don't really talk directly to the point of eating disorders. But the unexpected thing that happened was one day she was telling me how she she pulled me aside and said, Miss Liz, I haven't purged in two months. Guess how I've done it? And at first I was like, oh boy, maybe I don't want to know. But I asked her, how did you do it? And she said, I actually created a fitness and healthy collage on the back of my toilet. So every time I go to flip it up and purge, there's a whole collage of healthy, strong, and fit images, and I don't do it. And I just about my mouth, you know, just dropped, my heart swelled, and I couldn't believe it because that wasn't at all anything that I thought would happen um, when I first started Girls of Soul, but it's an amazing outcome, and some of the girls do so much on their own, um, and, you know, like I said in my presentation, we just plant the seed, and they, they grow from there. It's amazing. Great, great, great. The questions are coming in, guys, so, you know, Stay flexible here. So, Casey, this one is specific to you. How did you find out what your seniors wanted? Um, did you have visioning sessions? How did you How did you figure out what they wanted? Did you distribute surveys? Great question. So, what um, basically with through teaching the other classes? So, with having having those initial two classes on on board whenever I came. Um, that was a great opportunity as you grow relationships with your participants speaking and interacting with them is one of the best ways of finding more information whether you directly ask them that question of what they are wanting or looking for or just simply asking them what it is maybe that they struggle with or maybe what what whether they're exercising with arthritis or for instance if they're struggling with balance so you know hearing the word balance and and flexibility i did hear that several times clicking that okay our next step is definitely to add yoga so we added our our beginners yoga class once adding that beginners yoga class once as we as a couple i would say two to three months progressed i saw and spoke with several people who you know it was definitely necessary and no, i noticed the, the 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 necessity to then add a chair yoga class for those individuals who are unable to get down onto the floor but still to be able to receive that the benefits that yoga provides Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, Liz, this one is for you. Okay. Liz, how are you navigating the world of transgenders and being inclusive while holding on to your mission to help girls where they are and helping them navigate and leading to them, leading them to where they want to go? So the question is, um, how are you navigating the world of um, 
transgender um, folks yeah. that may be interested in a program? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, I've had a number of um, transgender participants already in Girls with Soul, and um, I wouldn't even just say recently, it's been over the past probably five or six years. Um, it happens uh, more often in residential treatment. I come across um, that desire for the participation um, than it happens in schools. But the way I navigate it is um, I, I address the group uh, first because I like the girls to know that they do have control um, over the program and that, you know, what their opinions and voices um, uh, matter and that they're heard. So every time I've had a transgender um, participant ask to be part of it, I'm always all for it, but I ask the girls and they 100% have all been all for it, no matter which way it goes, whether it's a, a boy um, becoming a girl or a girl becoming a boy, they've all been super accepting and the um, participants come in and I just make sure that I'm respectful to calling them he or she accordingly and um, that they're welcome and it's a non-judgmental environment. So it's worked out really well so far and um, I hope that maybe, you know, it's something that people will be more accepting to if they're just simply exposed to it. And that's what it's all about. Wow, great answer, great answer. So Casey, this one is for you. Um, it says, um, Casey, your graphics are nearly all white participants. What has been your experience taking the program to el elderly African-Americans or other minority communities? Nelson, can you repeat the second half of that question? Sure, sure. What has been your experience bringing your program to uh, minority communities? Because um, the, the listener noticed that all of your graphics had uh, the participants were white. So how are you making your program more welcoming to folks of color and other minorities? Sure. So our uh, in Indiana, we're in the southern southern part of Indiana, and just so happens this area that we are located in. Um, and I'm glad someone uh, noticed the noticed the photos. So uh, we are a very rich history of of German and also a Catholic descent. Now we have a very wide wide range of different people who live in this area, but um, whenever individuals come into the classes, one of the most important things I feel, and I mentioned in the webinar or in the presentation, is being welcoming. But not only me, but also sharing that with, with all of the seniors as well. Um, and just making sure that everyone feels absolutely welcomed into open arms. Um, and letting them know that they are that that these classes are for 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 any and all any person that walks in this door that is of course 55 and older um, and a county resident, but that the goal of these programs is to have fun, to socialize, to gain the benefits of exercise. Um, and then also just be able to learn and and enjoy one another and everyone's stories. Um, when I walk into class, you know, we, we have a couple who actually just recently moved here from Costa Rica. They are some of the, um, those two individuals, I, I personally love speaking with them because they have such a wonderful story and I find that, you know, I, I, I find and I try to encourage with the other, other participants as well is, is meeting, meeting those who aren't those who are familiar, you know, um, not just their high school friends or, or those who they've been neighbors with for 20 years, but reaching out and meeting with those, um, every participant in, in that room those days. 
Great. Thank you. Thank you. And, and this question could um, probably apply to both of you, but it was specific to Liz, but Liz maybe answered this specific question. How are you funded to provide girls with sports bras, water bottles, shoes, etc.? Okay. Um, in a couple of ways, mostly uh, I do a lot of fundraising on my own, and there's third-party fundraisers that are done for uh, Girls of Soul. But a huge part of the shoes and the um, bottles and the bras in particular um, are donated um, by various running stores or sporting goods stores um, that I've just over the years formulated a, I don't know, partnership, friendship with. And, you know, a lot of them like the cross marketing aspect of it or, you know, the um, cause marketing aspect of it. But um, also if we do a fundraiser, a lot of people love to know specifically what the money is going to. So instead of donating money, uh, maybe the cost to get into, um, you know, say a spin class or um, a yoga class is to bring a sports bra. So there's a lot of really creative ways that um, we end up having a huge amount of amazing bras and shoes donated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Casey, this one is kind of back to you again on that question of diversity. Um, are you taking any efforts to take your program into minority communities versus them coming to you? Sure. Um, so at this point, we have not done that yet. Um, and I, of course, say yet um, because we have just been increasing this last since I've come on board uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, slowly taking taking these programs and growing them where we are um, so in our location so eventually I can definitely um, I could not say yes or no uh, what our next steps would would be but um, I do think that that would be another fantastic opportunity for the future as well Great. That's on you later. All right. Absolutely. Um, so on the topic of the future, you know, you both are, um, you know, recreation professionals. Like, where is the recreational field programming headed? What would it look like in 2040? Um, oh, my gosh. Well, I'm yeah, hoping. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I'm hoping to go worldwide. <laughs> 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 love it, love it. We, 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 uh, girls run the world, Nelson. Um, <laughs> you know, I know uh, I've been asked um, in the past by various people, you know, what would Girls with Soul look like if you won, you know, the lottery? Would you walk away mm. from it? And it's quite the opposite. And I'm hoping in 2040 and <laughs> I'm taking baby steps. It's, you know, when you start something from scratch, literally, um, it takes a while to, to build and I'm proud of where it is now, but I'm hoping at some point, maybe I do win the lottery so that I can hire a staff and hire um, various directors uh, around the country. Um, and hey, worldwide is not, a, you know, it is funny to me because it's just me right now, but it's a, it's definitely a possibility. And I'm thinking that as um, especially in America in particular, our health costs go skyrocketing and people become more sedentary with technology and everything else. Um, hopefully recreation and um, our parks and um, just our health in general will be something that everybody embraces, including um, you know, governmental programs. Um, mm. So I don't like to get too political, but I think it's really important that health and fitness is um, addressed more strongly by a bigger uh, span of the population because it can't just be something um, that you react to. It should be something that you're constantly working on. Um, like Casey said, it's... Um, you know, exercise can be a form of medicine and it's um, amazing for your mental health as well. And I think a lot of problems could be solved if we were a little bit um, more cognizant of that. So let's hope that that's where it goes in 2040. <laughs> and you, Casey? 
And I would definitely reiterate just what Liz said is the I've been to several different um, conference sessions on exercise and where it is leading, of course, is the 55 plus population is only increasing. So seeing in the next 10 years, 15 years, that is the population, of course, one, one of the populations, of course, teen girls as well, but but one of the populations that definitely needs to be focused on and to provide that programming as well. But, um, but as, as we all know, our park systems can be such a wonderful place of opportunity for our seniors as well, just to be able to have that opportunity of finding exercise, but not only exercise, wellness, which with that well-being of having that socialization, that mental aspect, that physical aspect as well, um, to be able to have programming that provides those opportunities for them. Because as we all know, unfortunately, um, in America, you know, we do struggle with, with an obesity issue, with, with issues of different diseases, um, and exercise can be a huge part of, of a, a medicine, um, per se, to alleviating many of those, of those symptoms that come along. Uh, with those diseases as well. So um, I do feel, um, I know it's my passion and I know it's, um, it's what I, I teach and preach, but I do feel that we are taking a bit more of a, a turn toward, toward providing that programming um, as, a, as slowly as, as, well, as a park system, but slowly but surely um, the government is taking hold as well of that of that idea. So I, my hope and what my, my uh, site of 2040 is, is, is that as well. Great, great. And, and I will say along with the questions, there were, you know, several comments saying that you guys are inspiring, you know, your programs are great, great job. So just want to let you guys know that the, the audience is really responding to your content. Um, another question. What is the number one piece of advice you have for the listeners who want to increase park usage among girls, teen girls, and seniors? And again, you could emphasize the point that you brought up earlier if there's a new point that you want to make sure um, you get across. So what is the number one piece of advice that you have for folks? Um, I would say make it fun <laughs> if, because initially if it's something that they don't participate in, there's a reason why. And it's probably because they don't feel it's for them. They don't feel like it's going to be anything that'll benefit them and why bother with it. Um, so if you show them that it's something that can make them feel happy, everybody on the planet wants to feel happy, right? That's like, <laughs> All right. it's like the, it's the catchphrase <laughs> of the universe, you know, like yeah. do things that make you happy for your soul. How many times do you see that meme a day, right? But what All if right. you actually to did something about it. So I think it's just really um, making it inviting, making it seem accessible to everyone and that it's not a football coach mentality. It's not, we're going to kick your butt and make you feel sore and you're going to hate it and put the hurt on you. It's going to be something that you meet people, you have fun, you realize that there's stuff about yourself that you didn't think you could do, but you can. Um, and then go from there with it. I think the number one thing is make it fun, accessible, and for everyone. Thank you, Liz. Kate, Casey? Yes, so um, with, with seniors, you know, the same, the same, along the same lines is what Liz is saying. You know, without the fun aspect, it's, it's hard to bring someone back. Um, hard, it's a little bit more challenging, of course, to have them, if, if they don't have fun, to want to spread the word. So I would say, you know, one of the most, one of the number one piece of advice um, to increase park uses, you know, you might have an initial class that everyone is really excited for, but retaining the participants, I would say, would be the most important, in my opinion. Um, so, of course, reiterating what I said during the presentation, too, is 
ways to retain those participants is interacting and connecting with them, learning their stories, um, calling them by name as well, respecting them um, and respecting each of their each of their stories, where they have been, where they have come from as well, making it fun, like Liz, Liz said, and, and then um, making sure that they know that they're absolutely appreciated, um, thanking them for, for doing what they do, for coming in and being welcoming to the other participants so that it is a welcoming environment and, and continue to invite. I would say those are retaining the participants is, is my number one piece of advice. Great, great. So we have time for one quick, really quick question. Um, and this is more of a personal question, sending that both you guys work out. What is your go-to workout song? That's a tough question, Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough one. I'm going to go with Beastie Boys, No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. And I am actually, this is going to say a little bit corny, but I have a little one. And so, and I like, I enjoy running. So I really enjoy being out on a trail and I like peace and quiet and just hearing the sounds around me. I would say that would honestly be my favorite, my favorite sound, my favorite song while I'm okay. exercising. Okay, I thought you were about to say baby shark, so great. So oh, yeah. in, the interest, <laughs> in the interest of time, that was our last question. I'd like to thank our outstanding speakers for joining us today and for being willing to share their great work on ensuring program is accessible, engaging for teen girls, and for seniors in their communities. If you have additional questions, you can reach our speakers directly at the email shown on the screen, or you can email City Parks Alliance at info at cityparksalliance.org. Don't miss the last two webinars in our 2019 webinar series. Funding Brownfields to Parks will take place in November and is free and open to the public, and Homelessness in the park, Parks will take place in December and is a member-exclusive webinar. Stay tuned for more information at City Parks Alliance under the Events tab. Check there for future webinar and registration information. If you are a member, you'll also find our full webinar archive so you can view all past webinar recordings. Access to our webinars and our full webinar archives are just a few of the many resources available to City Parks Alliance members. We also offer city workshops, urban park study tours, our resource library full of examples of MOUs, agreements, and plans, a job bank, and discounts on our biannual, biannual annual greener, Greater and Greener Conference. Within the next week, you'll receive an email with a download link for a copy of today's presentation, a link to become a member, related resources and instructions how to claim your continuing education credits for AICP. Thanks to all of you, our attendees, whether joining us on webinar or catching the recording, for helping make CPA's webinar a success. Please take a minute to fill out the very short evaluation that will pop up after the session concludes. Thanks for joining and keep up the great work you're doing, you're doing to make our communities better. Thank you.